Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Fabulous. You need to wake up over there. You seem kind of tired. You all right? Oh, it's just a, yesterday was a long day. I'm, but, I am tired. Been a yeah. long week. You ready for the weekend? Yes. Well, it's, it's almost here, so you are in luck. We've got a great quote for today coming up in a second, but first, I want to tell you who my guest is. Debbie Reber. She's got a book called Differently Wired. And this is a cool book about uh, kids who maybe don't necessarily fit in to the system. And she has a, a child that didn't necessarily fit into the system. And she's got this book now called Differently Wired. And I'm excited to chat with Debbie about that. Here's our quote from Michael Jordan. He says, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the winning shot and I've missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeeded. Hmm. So there's so many people that are afraid to fail that they'll never try. So don't do that. Be sure to try because if you don't try, you automatically fail. Great quote right there from Michael Jordan. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. If you're a business owner trying to do your own website, maybe it's time to get help. Or if you don't even have a website, it's definitely time for help. It's 2018. This internet thing is here to stay. At 49bydesign.com, we offer a simple plan to get you online for just $49 a month with no setup fee. This includes a website with a hosting and domain name included in the price. We have larger packages available, but this will get you online so people can find you in 2018. We're affordable by design at 49bydesign.com. That's 49bydesign.com. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? Uh, I thought you'd never ask. It is uh, Friday, the 20th day of July. It is National Pennsylvania Day. Happy Pennsylvania Day, Heidi. Why, thank How are you, you going to celebrate? Uh, I wasn't <laughs> I planning on it. How about National Moon Day? How are you going to celebrate, Heidi? <laughs> <Not even> gonna, <laughs> don't tell me. Uh, it is also National Lollipop Day. You know how long it's been since I've had a lollipop? It's been yeah, a long time. It's been, yeah, it's been a long Several time. Several years. Uh, do you like lollipops? Mm. I'm a bigger fan of a sucker myself. Lollipops are kind of like, uh, almost like sucking on chalk. Yeah, I don't and know. And I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm confused, but isn't that a, a lollipop? Isn't that like a powdery thing? I or, was thinking a lollipop was the great big Oh, yeah. Ones. What Aren't am I thinking lollies? of then? Maybe that's what it is. What's the one that I'm thinking of that's kind of like... Like you used to get at the doctor's office? Yeah. <laughs> Is that a lollipop? And then the stick can be a straw. Yeah, exactly. It's got a little <laughs> hole in the end of it. Anyway, get out there and celebrate one way or another with today's uh, National Lollipop Day. John and Heidi. Are you tired of high cable TV rates? Sign up for Dish today and get a $500 bonus offer while supplies last. Plus, lock in your price for two years guaranteed. Call All-American Dish, your Dish authorized retailer now. 800-818-3967. 800-818-3967. That's 800-818-3967. Offers require credit qualification, 24-month commitment, early termination fee, and e-auto pay. Restrictions apply. Call for details. John and Heidi. Coming up, we've got your brain on drugs, but first, a study by the University of Rochester found that drinking two alcoholic drinks a day can clear away your brain toxins. So they're saying, uh, you know, we got all these toxins just hanging out in your brain. Alcohol will kind of go in and sweep those away if you have two alcoholic drinks a day. But if you have too many alcoholic drinks, it sweeps away all of your brain cells. So <laughs> don't do that. I think we've all met some of those people. As a matter of fact, we've got some in the news. We're going to talk about them in a bit as we get to your brain on drugs. That's coming up. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This time of year, there are many parties, weddings, cookouts, and other events that often include alcohol. If you're drinking, be sure to have a designated driver. If you or someone you know has a problem with drugs or alcohol, there is help. The Addiction Hope and Helpline wants to help. If you feel like it's time to finally get the help you need, there's a toll-free number you can call, 1-800-438-0380. That's the Addiction Hope and Helpline, 1-800-438-0380, 1-800-438-0380. And, Heidi. and this is your brain on drugs. According to investigators, a Texas woman is facing assault charges after biting off and swallowing a large chunk of a female's nose, a victim that she was fighting with. That's disgusting. That is so what is wrong with people? 41-year-old Jessica Collins was arrested Thursday, so a week ago, last week, uh, was not yesterday, for a bloody attack in spring. 
Houston suburbs, so Spring, Texas, right outside of Houston. Collins was staying with a female neighbor of the victim, so she was staying next door. Right. And apparently they got in an argument with the neighbor uh, <sighs> after a bunch of time at a local bar where the three returned to the victim's home. So the, they started as a party and ended up not going well. Oh. She asked the host for some more booze and cigarettes. Instead, she said, no, just leave. Get out of here. And that prompted a little fight, some yanking of some hair, and then uh, that's when she bit off a chunk of the lady's nose. Yikes. That is such a bizarre that story. escalated quickly. It certainly did. I've got a link to the story if you want to see it and read it and hear it and all of that stuff. It's a little too much for me. But I've got it in the show notes at johnandheidyshow.com. John and Heidi. Now, big screen, little screen. Kenya Moore announced that she will not be returning to Real Housewives of Atlanta. Heidi, what are you going to do next season? Oh, no. no we don't watch what that one. What will I watch? <laughs> Honestly, for those of you who watch those, I don't mean to make fun of it every single time I do. they come up. No. <laughs> here's the thing. Ridiculous. Every time they come on the story, uh, we have a story about those. We kind of poke fun at them. And if you're a big fan of those, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that we're poking fun at them. We just don't get it. If you're a big we've, fan of those, I'm sorry. <laughs> we should, should just stop there. <laughs> would you stop it? <laughs> no, we, we've uh, never really given it a much time to like fall in love with it because we got too many shows already <laughs> yeah we'll go so with that. that's why that's why we don't want quiet that. heidi <laughs> i'm trying to sound like nice people um anyway if you're a real housewife fan sad Sorry. news <laughs> 61 year old i'm moving on 61 year old actress denise nickerson uh for those of you who remember the original willy wonka and the chocolate factor she played violet she was the young girl that played okay. violet she suffered a stroke last week. That's oh, really sad. No. So she's 61. Um, I, you kind of forget about that when you watch that. You know, she's just a kid, but that's been a long, long time ago. So this has been Big Screen, Little Screen. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Now you can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go. And pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at low-cost airlines. 800-719-5601. 800-719-5601. That's 800-719-5601. Now your scoop of the day for this Friday. We've got uh, a couple of stories here. This one was just kind of bizarre. The Tennessee Department of Health says they're still investigating a zip line attraction that gave 500 people gastrointestinal illness. What are they doing at that zip line? Mm. They said there was some E. coli that caused some sickness. Um, I'm not sure how you ride the zip line, but I was thinking you grabbed it by your hands. <laughs> Were they biting onto this thing? I'm not sure how that works. Anyway, it all happened in June. Uh, 15th of June is when it all started, and a bunch of people got the norovirus. So if you read that wow. online and you know all about it, it's, uh, they say Climb Works Zip Line Canopy Tour is cooperating and they're trying to get everything all squared away, and and they're even giving refunds to people who were you know ill from it. So I would there you hope go. So, so I, that doesn't sound like a good thing at all. Uh, Netflix shares have tumbled fourteen percent as the company posted lower than expected subscription numbers. The company only added <laughs> only added Heidi six hundred and seventy thousand new subscribers in the second quarter. That sounds like a lot of subscribers to okay, me. Okay, but if they're used to way 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 more than yeah. that. And I can tell you what's causing it. They started to get political, and well, people don't like it. That, we go to television for entertainment, not to have your personal views shoved down our throats. That's also why people listen to the radios for entertainment, not to have political views. That's I, why I'm not I taking a side either way. I'm just say, very, stating the facts. Very clear of politics here. So that's why we do that. Um, so again, Netflix shares down 14%. 670,000 subscribers still. That sounds like a lot to me. Uh, we talked with Dave Thomas. The last two Mondays, he was our Movie Star Monday guest. He was telling me uh, that when he was visiting with the uh, the dude in charge there at Netflix, that he said they're adding a thousand new shows this year to Netflix. A thousand—that's a lot of shows. So it's because he got all these subscribers. They need to make sure we got stuff for him to watch. You know? Now, have you ever heard of Facetune? What is Facetune? I have no idea. I feel like I'm a ancient dude right now because I don't know what I'm even talking about. But I'll read the story, and hopefully this makes sense to people listening. Makes no sense to me. A Facetune survey, whatever that is, found that 90% of all bikini photos posted online have been edited to enhance the subject's features. 
So 90% of the bikini photos that you're seeing where you're going, oh, I don't look as good as she does. She doesn't look as good as she does. So don't feel bad about it. 90%. So I don't know who Facetune is that's doing this survey, but I have to just come out right now and tell you, I have never, ever edited any of my bikini photos to make me look better. Just so you know. (laughs) I want to make sure we make that very clear. I don't have any bikini photos either. Although one of my Facebook memories was a photo of me in the pool for, I think it said nine years ago. And I just shared it again. I just shared the thing again. Now, when I shared it, I was on my phone and I didn't see the whole thing. So I shared it. And then I was looking on the computer. I was like, I kind of got a little cleavage going there. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe I shouldn't have shared that. (laughs) I'm not exactly what you would call a physically fit man. (laughs) Maybe I need to be editing my bikini photos after all. Uber is investigating a driver in North Carolina who kicked three girls out of his car because they uh, had a different political opinion than he had. So he was driving these girls, and they I don't know what they said or what happened exactly, but he was doing his job driving, and they had a different political opinion, and he stopped and booted them out. So now Uber is saying, um, I don't think we're okay with that. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, New York City store it's is... his car. Yeah, it is his car, but he's also at work. Okay. It's no, not... That's not really a job. It, yeah, it is. It is a job. It's, he was employed to do people that. People text you, hey, I need a ride. Okay, I'm coming right over. And, and you pick up a random stranger. It's not like you're getting you're on the yeah, clock and you're, you're getting, getting paid, paid by yes, the you hour. absolutely are. You're getting paid by the mile. So it is a job. <laughs> Let's move back <laughs> to this. I would think you can kick anybody out of your car that okay. you want to. I don't think that's how it works. A New York City store is now renting out mattresses where you can take a 45-minute nap for 25 bucks. This sounds like a terrible idea. That is awful. <laughs> Who wants to? Hopefully it's just for naps, and I hope somebody monitors that to make sure. <laughs> Here's uh, twenty five bucks. I'll give you fifty bucks. There's two of us. Uh, we gonna. I don't think that's how it works. I hope not, but that's happening in New York City right now. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Do you have ideas for t-shirt designs, but you don't have a clue how to print them? Or maybe you'd like to have t-shirts and coffee mugs available to buy online with your business logo printed on them. There's a website that makes it easy. We set ours up in about 10 minutes. There's no sign-up fee, no minimum orders, no monthly fees. It's just a really easy way to put some cool items online for sale, and you get paid every time somebody buys them. You don't have to print or ship anything. Just sign up, upload your designs, and then let people know where they can get your cool stuff. More details available at radiosavings.com. That's radiosavings.com. John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show. We have a special guest joining us today. Debbie Reber is a New York Times bestselling author. She's a speaker. She's also the founder of Tilt Parenting. And I'm excited to visit with Debbie about her new book that just recently came out. It's called Differently Wired. Debbie, thank you so much for taking time to visit with us. How are you doing today? I'm great, thanks. How are you? Very good. And I like the secondary title. It says Raising an Exceptional Child in a Conventional World. And I think that's a fantastic way to describe what you're going to learn about in this book. Let's talk about the background and where this comes from. Well, I am the mother of a 13-year-old differently wired child, and when I use the term differently wired, I'm talking about someone who's moving through the world in a way that is neurologically atypical. So it could be ADHD or sensory issues or gifted or uh, autism spectrum, and I got a trifecta. My child is gifted with ADHD and Asperger's. So learning how to parent him and navigate that journey has become my life's work. And I wanted to share what I've learned with other parents who are raising uh, unique kids. At what point did you realize that your son was differently wired? Yeah, the interesting thing with these kids is their differences are invisible for the most part. And so it takes a while to realize, like, is something going on or isn't something going on? You know, we knew he was very intense from a young age and had kind of bigger tantrums than his peers and would get notes home from preschool. And, you know, but it's really kind of late preschool, early elementary school years when we started getting more phone calls and, you know, after school pool aside from teachers and getting the message that, okay, this is really intense or this is really disruptive and this isn't what we would expect to see right now. And so it was kind of a gradual realization. Now, one of the things I'm looking through the book here, and I think this is a great point, you say it's important to become fluent in your child's language. And that might sound funny to some people, but uh, to, to others, they're, they're going to understand instantly that uh, if you know 
what to look for. And if you know what's going on, it's a whole lot easier to deal with what's happening at the time. So becoming fluent in their language isn't necessarily speaking a verbal language, but it's it's uh, all of the other body language and everything else that's going on to let you know what the real issue is, right? That's exactly right. And I think as parents, we go into it thinking, okay, I'm going to raise my kid in this way with this philosophy and I know what I'm doing. And if we charge ahead with our own plan without really taking the time to learn who our child is and what they need and how they're communicating their needs to us, we're going we're to we're have trouble meeting in the middle there. So we really have to kind of immerse ourselves in who they are and how they're constantly communicating through the behavior and, and tantrums and everything and learning how to adapt our style so that we can support them. So now speaking about support, how would you have liked to see the educational system support your child differently than maybe how they did? Well, you know, education, if I could solve that problem, boy, it, it is really complicated for atypical kids. I think our struggles were, you know, working in schools. And we went through three schools in three years for K, first and second grade. And finding a fit was hard because there's a desire on schools' parts to get the child kind of going along with their peers in the same way, but these kids process differently. My child needs to move. You know, he needs to pace if he's writing, and that's not okay in a classroom. It's hugely disruptive, and I understand that, but I think we need to find ways where kids can learn the way they need to learn and feel good about who they are while still getting to, you know, to stay in a school system. So there's a lot of reform and work that needs to happen to support these kids, which, by the way... 20%, at least 20% of kids are atypical in some way. So we do need to figure out how to support them. And I think for years, you know, if you're a round peg in a square hole, they just try to pound harder to make that fit, and that doesn't work. It doesn't work, and our kids pay the price. You know, my child identified as the bad kid, you know, when he was in second grade because the way that his frustration would come through, it came out in in a behavioral way that was inappropriate. But his needs weren't being met. You know, anyone whose needs aren't being met is going to become dysregulated. I love the concept. Again, this is not your first book. The book that we've been talking about is called Differently Wired, but Deborah is also a New York Times bestselling author of other books as well and the founder of Tilt Parenting. Let's talk about Tilt Parenting. Yeah, I founded Tilt a little over two years ago because I wanted to, I had such a hard time kind of navigating a path and figuring out you know, what do I do with this kid and where are the resources? Where's my community? And so I decided to create a community. And uh, so through Tilt, I have a weekly podcast where I interview parent coaches and experts and psychologists and, and other parents to provide other parents like me just inspiration and really solid information about how they can kind of forge a path for their own child. Well, thank you so much for doing what you do. I know that there are many people who have children who are differently wired, and I guarantee you they're going to be appreciative if they get a chance to read this. Thank you so much. And again, the book is called Differently Wired. And again, my favorite is the secondary title here, Raising an Exceptional Child in a Conventional World. It's available right now. And our guest today has been the author of this book. And her name is Debbie Reber. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. If you're a business owner, you should consider using radio. Radio is a powerful tool. Over 90% of us listen to the radio each week. Imagine if this ad was talking about your business, helping you hit your goals. We can help. We can also create a fun jingle, too, to get people singing your song. When you put words to music, they're nine times more memorable, and that makes radio work even better. Learn more at RadioReallyWorks.com. Radio jingles to help you get better results with the money you're already spending. RadioReallyWorks.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. Was that, John? The oil used by jewelers to lubricate clocks and watches is about $3,000 a gallon. Whoa. Yeah. So don't complain about gas anymore. <laughs> like, yeah. Whoa. Did you see how much it was per gallon? Was it $3,000? Uh, no. Yeah, then don't complain. You probably don't use much. No, no. you don't. I'm like sure. A, a little, little dabble, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's somebody else's line. But fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The IRS... Internal Revenue Service, they process more than 20, I'm sorry, more than 2 billion pieces of paper every year. 2 billion. Mm. That is a whole lot of paper. That's a whole lot of paper. You'd think that by now we could get paperless and we could have everything digital there. You'd think, but apparently not. 
Uh, again, a couple of fun facts right there. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday. John and Heidi. If you're a business owner trying to do your own website, maybe it's time to get help. Or if you don't even have a website, it's definitely time for help. It's 2018. This internet thing is here to stay. At 49bydesign.com, we offer a simple plan to get you online for just $49 a month with no setup fee. This includes a website with the hosting and domain name included in the price. We have larger packages available, but this will get you online so people can find you in 2018. We're affordable by design at 49bydesign.com. That's 49bydesign.com. John and Heidi. Time now for the grandiloquent word of the day. Are you ready for this one, Heidi? I am ready. All right. I'm ready now as well. It is high binder. High binder. What do you think a high binder is? H-I-G-H-B-I-N-D-E-R. High binder. What do you think that is? I have no idea. It is a person who engages in fraudulent or shady activity, specifically a corrupt or scheming politician would be a high binder. All righty then. An assassin also, especially one belonging to a 19th century Chinese American criminal organization. They were known as high binders. And a member of the 19th century Chinese American secret society that engaged in blackmail and murder is also a high binder. And a gangster is also known as a high binder. There's four different high binders. Two are kind of the same. But three of the four high bi- three of the four high binders are kind of different from each other. But it's interesting to me that a politician and a gangster both go by the same title, Highbinder. Hmm. It's today's grandiloquent word. John and Heidi. Now you can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go. And pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at low-cost airlines. 800-719-5601. 800-719-5601. That's 800 719 5601. Now some weird news for you on a Friday, and this one comes from England, where a Devon and Cornwall police officer expressed his shock after seeing pictures of a car which had bucket seats and required the motorist to use a pair of pliers to steer it. (sighs) Norfolk and Suffolk's Road and Police Firearms Operation Unit tweeted out a photo of a badly damaged car, which was also missing a bumper and headlights and had a flat tire. (laughs) The force posted the image of the car in the early hours Friday morning and wrote, yes, this was driven on a road. And yes, he was sitting on a bucket and steering (laughs) with a pair of mole grips, which are like pliers. John Parker uh, from the Norfolk police retweeted the post with the comment, I think this is the most unroadworthy car I've ever seen. Ridiculous that it was driven on a public road in this condition. Well, when you got to go somewhere, you got to go somewhere. I got to tell you, he's like, well, I can steer with these pliers. (laughs) No seat. Aha. Got a bucket. I'm just happy to hear that they have rednecks in England. I didn't know they had that. I mean, I've seen this done before. Specific members of my family would do this. (laughs) I may be one of them. I'm a recovering redneck. So, you know, I think we could. We we could probably make that happen. All right. This has been today's weird news. I've got a link to the story. And if you want to see the photo, it's all in the show notes at johnandheidyshow.com. Now your moment of duh. Just got to stop for a second here because we were just talking a moment ago about this car that was a fantastic uh, spectacle to look at. Uh, we've got the link in the show notes, but I've had people asking me why we're not posting as much stuff on Facebook anymore. Uh, for a while there, we had all kinds of stuff we were posting on Facebook. Facebook was limiting how many people would see it anyway. So it's like the more work we were doing to push it out, uh, the less people they were letting see it. Mm-hmm. So that's why we created the show notes. And you don't need a Facebook account to see that stuff. So that's why it's there. Uh, before, like every time we would post something out there, they were limiting it down to fewer and fewer and fewer people. And I don't understand their algorithms and how all of that stuff works. But or I just why said, they would want to limit people from seeing I, anything. I don't, I don't know. It makes no it. sense. But uh, your moment of duh for today from Arizona, 44-year-old uniformed security guard is accused of impersonating a police officer. When I say accused, I mean he did it. Here's what <laughs> happened. I don't know why they say accused. He did. He tried to pull over an unmarked car that happened to be two state troopers. Oh, my gosh. The uh, the gentleman by the name of Matthew Allen Disbro of Mesa was driving his personal black Dodge Charger on Wednesday, and he pulled up next to the law enforcement, turned on some lights that looked just like police officer lights, and tried to pull them over. That's when they turned on their own lights and pulled him over. 
They were in a yellow Ford Mustang, so he never would have thought that was a police car. Uh, they drove alongside. Or he drove alongside and was yelling, trying to get him to pull over. They pulled him over and gave him some tickets for doing what he was doing. It's a bad idea. Don't, don't pretend to be a police officer. What was he going to do? I'm going to give you guys a ticket. I, I mean, know. okay, just going to pay me on the side of the road here. I mean, yeah, that's not how it works. Cash only, please. Not how it works, so I'm, I'm glad that he got in trouble. Do not ever impersonate an officer. Bad idea. Or um, a military personnel. Yeah, don't. That's called stolen, stolen valor. valor. It's a bad and it thing. it is awful. It is. This has been today's Moment of Duh. John and Heidi. This time of year, there are many parties, weddings, cookouts, and other events that often include alcohol. If you're drinking, be sure to have a designated driver. If you or someone you know has a problem with drugs or alcohol, there is help. The Addiction Hope and Helpline wants to help. If you feel like it's time to finally get the help you need, there's a toll-free number you can call, 1-800-438-0380. That's the Addiction Hope and Helpline, 1-800-438-0380, 1-800-438-0380. John and Heidi. Time now for fake news or Florida. Heidi has gotten so many of these right, people think that it's rigged. I mean, <laughs> I don't think they're like, thinks. everybody thinks it's a bunch of fooey. They don't even put stock in this anymore. They're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> Heidi's going to get it right. I know how this works. Uh, All right. You ready for one? Yes, I'm ready. All right. Fake news or Florida. A man was busted for driving drunk after riding his horse to an Arby's in Florida. Fake news or Florida? Fake news. Ah, dang it. It was fake news. How did you know that was fake news? Because there really aren't a lot of horses wandering around in Florida. Now, <laughs> well, if you maybe. would have said Texas, I would well, have been but like, well, yeah, of course. Here's That's the like thing. a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing, though. This isn't fake news or Texas. It's fake news. <laughs> Or Florida. I don't know if you remember the way this game Or works. if you would have said a lawnmower, I would okay. have said yes. Okay. Well, now I'm going to have to write that one. <laughs> How about this one? Fake news or Florida? A man told police he wasn't drinking and driving because he only drank at stoplights. Fake news <laughs> or Florida? I'm hoping this was Florida. It was, actually. <laughs> We have that true story coming up. Uh, not right now. It's it's actually going to be oh, in our. Oh, that's fantastic! When I read the story, I had to laugh because I was like, you know what? There's probably a, a there's going to be an attorney that'll say he wasn't drinking and driving. He was only drinking when he was stopped. And the guy will probably get off. I don't know. Crazy story. Uh, I don't some, think he'll probably get off. I hope but it's, not. It's you know a for effort. Yeah, that's- we've got. <laughs> We've got some good news coming your way. Thanks for listening to Fake News or Florida. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. Time now for some good news. We love to wrap things up around here with good news, don't we, Heidi? Yes, we do. It's a true statement. Also, uh, we we, uh, have our good news coming your way courtesy of Odiva. That's also a true statement. Odiva is a monthly subscription service just for the ladies. And I guess that's more of my opinion there because if men wanted to buy it, I'm sure they could. They um, could. All the details. Yeah, what do they do with it? I don't know could. either. All the details at radiosavings.com. So are you ready for uh, some good news, honey? Are you ready for something yes. really good? I think this is such an adorable story. And once again, it goes back to the feeling that I think our dogs are lazy because they don't do nothing. Our dogs <laughs> don't do anything around here. So here's a story. It says, watch a dog push his disabled owner's wheelchair down the street. Oh. Uh, Dingong, the dog, D- <laughs> D-I-N-G-O-N-G. Is that how you'd say that? Dingong? <laughs> okay. He needs a better name. Uh, he's a perfect example of why canines are man's best friend. The seven-month-old pup was spotted on the streets in the Philippines pushing his disabled owner along in a wheelchair. His 46-year-old owner lost the use of his legs in a motorcycle accident a few Aww. years ago. And that's why the dog helps push the wheelchair through the streets. How does a dog know where he wants to go? I think he's just pushing, and the guy's steering. So a woman uh, had been driving home with her husband when she spotted this heartwarming duo last month. She pulled out her phone and filmed the pup as he pushed the back of the wheelchair with the top of his head. She was so touched by this bond, she stopped the man and offered to buy him lunch. She said it was a beautiful moment, and we saw the pair of them. We took Danello, that's the gentleman's name, 
to our favorite buffet. We wanted to treat him. So it is just, I hope the dog got a treat too. <laughs> He's well, doing all yeah, the pushing. the dog's doing the work. I just think it's a really cool story. You can see the video. I have this a feeling dog. the dog got a very nice yeah, doggy I'm sure bag. I'm, I'm sure he did too. What a great story though. I've got a link to that in our show notes at johnandheidyshow.com. And if you ever come across good news, you can certainly share that with us too. I get several things shared with me uh, that are silly news. Get a lot of the fake news or Florida stuff shared lately. It seems like every time somebody comes across some weird story from Florida, they want to share it. Make up some fake ones for me because like Heidi keeps guessing, oh, that's a true story. That's a true story. <laughs> I'm just not very good at making up the fake ones. That's all. So if you got a good one, you can do all of that through our website, johnandheidyshow.com. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday.